Hey guys, so earlier today Martin put this post up in the uh, Bricks community Facebook group. I uh, just wondering how to get this kind of layout. Um, and I'd already done something similar to this using uh, Grid and uh, making a query loop compatible with Bricks. And I was going to chuck up a video there and then I just saw uh, Steve's comment here. Uh, something we all missed. I think all the comments down here were some great comments. Uh, all of them missed that it's got a little bit of overhang on the last item, which is, we're not sure whether that's intentional or not, but everybody missed it, including me. Uh, so I just had to revisit and figure out whether I could still do that with the grid. Unfortunately, you can very easily. So I'm just going to make this video to show you how I would do this. Um, and just to be clear, the way this has been created, all of the content they've got fits perfectly into the... Uh, heights of each of these items so the content is being made specifically for that uh, which is easy to do when you're using static content uh, not so easy if you're using dynamic content from a query loop uh, because you don't know whether you're going to have a short title or a long title a short description or a long description uh, so we're not going to worry about fitting perfectly into the height um, you can play with that a little bit later you might be able to change the amount of content size of graphics what sort of stuff I'm just going to look at the actual layout of this grid you can worry about the content that's inside that uh, later on so let's have a look at that in action here's a brick starter site and oh, I'm just going to show you the grid uh, and with this grid you can see we've got the blue uh, elements or blue items have got one two three rows the dark ones have got one, two rows, and they've got a gap all the way around. And we've got the uh, second, third, fourth, so second, third, and sixth items are alternate, or the alternate version. Um, so it's not a simple uh, odd and even, it's actually a little bit more difficult than that. So um, that's the layout, and you can see we've got the last item just extending a little bit beyond the grid. Uh, as per the diagram. So I'm not keen on that, so I probably wouldn't do that, but I'll just throw it in there so we can meet what was actually being asked for. So that's the um, layout we're going to get. Um, and if we go to our brick starter here, you can see it's actually a query loop. And if I go to my query loop, you know, I, I've done this for up to 10 uh, items. So if I change that to 10 in my query loop, I've got now 10 items. So that uh, it's four uh, columns of two per column, and we've got the same structure here with the last one overhanging. I get an eight, I get four, I get a six, I get a three, uh, I go to four, I get two, etc. Okay, so I'm going to put that back to six. So it's something you can use with dynamic data, which I think is great. Um, anyway, so look at the we're gonna look at the structure first so what i've got here is these are a card component uh, and uh, they're all the same card component so they've just got some modifications uh, on the card when they're uh, these um, selected uh, items and uh, obviously the heights are determined by the grid so let's look at the card itself so a very simple card i've made this very simple just for the purpose of this video so I've just got a simple card, which is a direction of vertical column, a row gap of one rem. And I think that's it. No, in my styling, I've got two rem padding all the way around. Uh, my background, I've just set a color. And the color I've used, oops, is a variable of BG color. And I'll show you where I get that from and why I do that. So it's BG color for the color there. And on the border, uh, I've just put a border radius all the way around a 1 REM. Again, put whatever, whatever you want there. And all of my CSS for all of this here is all on this CSS tab here. And that is basically variables. And the reason I do variables is because you, you saw up when I looked at the background color, uh, I used the BG color and I can override this. Uh, if I look at the icon color, heading color and text color, so I go to my icon, card icon, topography. I'm using my icon color here. Uh, heading, heading, 
quickly make sure I would select the right class on the heading color and the basic text I'm on the text color. So that's all coming from these variables on the card itself up here. All right, now that way there I can easily create uh, variations for the card. So I might make a card secondary, so card dash dash secondary. All I have to do is copy that, put it into the CSS for the secondary modifier, and then change these colors. Now I've got a modifier for the card. So it's really simple. And we can also modify these further up the DOM uh, by making it more specific. And we can override those. This is what we're going to do in this case here. So that's our simple card. Now if we go up the tree, we've got our item. Uh, and our item is a query loop. And the query loop here is basically on my posts. And in this case, I'm getting six items. That's all I've done there. Uh, I've set it to a direction of column. And I think that's it for the item. It is. There's no other CSS thing. So the item, all I've done is set it to a query loop and a direction of column. Then we'll get further up the tree to the actual grid. And here's my grid layout. And we've got a grid, display of grid, a gap of one RAM. So that's our gap all the way around. Uh, we're not putting anything in the template columns. We wanted to auto create the columns. Uh, what we're worried about is how it fits, how the rows fit into a column. And when they won't fit into that column anymore, it automatically creates the next column. So we're not going to specify how many columns we have. What we're going to specify is how many rows we have. So we've got to repeat five, one fraction. Okay, so that means we've got five rows. And then we're going to set our grid auto flow to column. What that means is that that's, this one here is item one. That one there is item two. And what it will do is that the second item flows down the column. If you have it to uh, row, it flows across. So what happens here is that we've told it we've got in the whole grid, we've got five rows. The first row, the first item takes up three rows. The second item takes up two rows. And they fit within that column. If the second item took up more, say, let's say it was three rows as well, it would automatically go across and create a second column. But because they fit, that's fine. The next item won't fit in that column there, so it creates a new column. Then we've got the two, three, three, two. So each of these is making up one column by automatically flowing when the total number of rows um, are the total amount of rows that we've got in that column. Hopefully that makes sense. That was a bit of a bit of a tongue twister there. Um, anyway, so um, what else have we got on there? Have we got anything on the I don't think we've got anything on that styling there. No, we haven't. It's just there to be part of the BEM structure. All right, so um, it's our item our grid layer. Okay. So uh, where do we get to? Okay. So back to the style tab. Uh, why is my CSS shell? There we go. Got a uh, Think from advanced SEMA here, which enhances the way this works. Uh, and sometimes the CSS doesn't show unless you hide and show it again, which is what's happening there. All right. So what we're doing here, the first thing we're doing is targeting from our root, which is the layout grid one. We're targeting all of the item elements and then the first whatever. The first element, whatever it is, we're setting our flex grow to one. If we don't, if I set that to zero, our card will only fill the space that it needs for its content. We're going to tell that card that's inside the item to grow to fill up all of the space. And because the item itself we set to a column, the flex grow knows it needs to fill up the space vertically. Okay, so that's it. That's it there. So grid, grid flex, uh, flex grow of one just makes that card fill the space of those rows that are assigned to it. I'm going to set a default grid row, just span three. So all these blue ones here are just a grid row of span three. So span across three rows. All right. We're then going to, in fact, I'm just going to change the query to 10 so we can see what the CSS is about.
Okay. So then we can see down here. What we're going to do is change the behavior of all the alternates, so all these dark ones. So what we're saying is the root item, so this item element, uh, nth child of two, three, six. Well, we've got six there twice. Didn't need the six there twice. We've done the same down here. Now I have it. Okay. Two, three, six, seven, and ten. So item number two, three, six, seven, and ten. So these are the items that we want to be the alternate. So we want to span those across only two rows. So just set our span to two, a grid row to, uh, grid row to span two. Uh, then we want to use exactly the same rule here, um, but we want to append a arrow card so any item that is say for example the second child then followed by the card we're going to set the background color icon color heading color and text color and this is why we use the variables so we can target these and we can change those wherever we like and get variations so we can add utility classes with modifiers um, or we can target them through uh, our css selectors from parents and change their properties which is um, i think a uh, a sensible way of doing it. So that's all we're doing. So we're targeting exactly the same elements as we are to set their span, but we're then also targeting the card that's under them and then setting these variables here um, so that they appear as different colors. And then to get this last card overhang here, all we're doing is on the last child setting the height to 105%. And that works. So if I just get rid of that, we don't have an overhead flow on that one. Uh, if I want it, then I'll put that in there. I'm not particularly keen on it, but that answers the question that was asked in the uh, Facebook um, community. So that's it, really. It's just uh, as simple as that. It's um, query loop compatible. Um, it's allowing for up to five columns of you know two cards per column. Um, what else do I miss? Oh. One thing I did miss, so is on the grid itself, it still looks fine at the tablet portrait, mobile landscape, we're okay there. Where are we? Maybe we should change at that point. Oh, how many have we got here? Let's go back to just having six. Okay. So now tablet, we're okay. Mobile landscape, we're still okay. When we go to our mobile, it's going to be too narrow. So what we do on the mobile is on the grid layout, instead of being a grid, we don't, if you believe it on a grid, it's not quite fitting there, is it? Right? So if we change the display of that to flex, which would automatically be a, col a column at this um, uh, this uh, breakpoint because of the bricks defaults, It'll ignore all of the grid row spans and it just appears as one column in flex. So that's the only property we need to change when we get to mobile and that gives us the mobile responsive grid here. Uh, I would say that if you did decide, let's say for example back here, uh, if you did decide to go to say uh, maybe eight, and you find at this break point here, it's you know, you really want to, um, yeah, it's, yeah, if you decided that break point there that you really want to go to one column, just go to that, change it to flex, and it's all one column at that break point there. All right, so uh, hopefully that makes sense. It, um, it just depends on you know, how you're going to use this, um, whether you're going to use it for static content, we're going to use it as a query loop. Um, you know, you can have the featured image in the background here if you want to. Um, and you just have like the overlay maybe changing color depending on the alternation of those. Um, totally up to you, but you know, this this works. So I think I've covered everything. Uh, if I if there's anything I've missed, chuck it in the comments. Uh, happy to let you know or, you know, uh, put an updated video to uh, answer any of those questions. So thanks for listening.